Have you ever wondered why you don't witness the people? My name is Robin Bremer and I'd like to share with you um, something that God shared with me not too long ago. I had gone to um, the Southwest Believers Convention um, two years ago, um, and um, which is Kenneth Copeland's ministry. I had been there and I was, you know, enjoy I had been sent there by God to uh, be an altar worker um, and also to go out in the street and evangelize. And um, Riley Stevens trained me, which is, he's awesome. He's, uh, he also worked with uh, Rodney Howard Brown, and they kind of use the same method. And I use that method, and it is awesome. It's so easy to get people saved. But while I was there, um, I went through his training. It was about 45 minutes, an hour. Uh, every day we went out for th three days, three or four days. And so I got to hear his training over and over again. Uh, but from different angles and different pieces, which was awesome. And so I went out there. I had great boldness and, uh, and confidence and boldness and access. And I actually uh, decided to get out of my comfort zone. And one of the ladies there taught me how to get on a bus at the bus station, ask the bus driver permission, get on the bus at the bus station, and um, ask permission to uh, pray for them to have a safe journey. And uh, they said yes, and then you give them the gospel message. Well, I actually did that. I got on the bus and I said, Hi, everybody. I d uh, my name is Rob, and I got permission from the bus driver to pray for you all for a safe journey. So I'm going to pray right now. Father God, I just plead the blood of Jesus over every one of these passengers that they would have a safe journey there. The bus driver would stay awake and alert. There would be no blowouts in their tires. And Father, I thank you that Romans 3 says all of us, all, the wages of sin is death. And all of us, right, Romans 3 says all of us have sinned. Romans 6 says the wages of sin is, of, is death. But the gift of God is life through Jesus. And Romans 10 says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. So everybody, just say this prayer with me. Father God, I receive the free gift. I call on the name of Jesus. Be my Lord. Thank you for forgiving me for my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. And you get off the bus. And it's really, really cool. And I actually did that. And I think I got nine people saved on the bus. And then I went into a restaurant, and you do the exact same thing. However, the restaurant owner, when I got to the part about the Bible says and Jesus says, and she just freaked out, and she just all of a sudden shut me right down and wouldn't let me finish what I was saying. But a police officer there uh, called me over and said, thank you for praying for us, and thank you, you know. And, and so that made me feel really, really good. But... I had great boldness, is what I'm trying to say, and I, I, I got like 20 people saved in just a couple of days uh, through that method. And I'm, I'm not saying I, I'm saying it's my mouth, my body, my hands, my feet, my sweat. But what I'm saying is Jesus did it through me, because I'm His flesh that walks in the church and on the earth today, and you're His flesh that walks on the earth today. His spirit lives in you. You're His body. I'm His body. So that's what I mean when I say that. So um, I came home and I was going to the dentist and getting the dentist uh, uh, assistant saved. And um, everywhere I go, I get people saved every day. I talked to a group of six, five teenage boys and got four of them saved. The one just refused to say, I had boldness. I just, and it was so easy. And then I just kind of, for some reason, didn't do it as much. And I kind of like lost my confidence. And then... Uh, you know, the Believers Convention was in August, or July, so it had been a year in July. I had been back from that convention. I had lost my boldness, and I was grieving, and, and I was feeling um, condemned. The devil would condemn me, and he'd say, what's the matter with you? You, don't, you know, you have to get everybody saved, blah, 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 blah. And everywhere I go, it was like I, every person I saw, I knew that I could approach them and, and, and probably get them saved because the message is so valuable. And... I didn't because I was afraid of rejection. I, you know, and I, then I began to struggle. God, what's wrong with me? Where's my boldness? What happened? And just recently, he told me something that I think would be of great value to you. This is what he said to me. He said, you are not giving value to the gospel. The gospel, you got to, he says, you have to realize that what you have to offer them is valuable. I said, wow, I never thought of it that way. I have something of value to give them. I mean, think about it. I can lay hands on them and get them healed because Jesus lives in me. I can keep them from going to hell. I can keep them uh, from getting killed tomorrow. 
through prayer, through Jesus Christ who lives in me. I'm an ambassador, a representative of Jesus. I'm called to reconciliation. Jesus already paid for them to not go to hell. Jesus already paid for them to be healed. I'm just a delivery person. But the whole key here is God said that I was not seeing that I had something of value to give to them. Like, for example, if um, you're a woman and you go in the bathroom, you're, you go in the bathroom at Walmart, and it's really, really dirty in this one particular toilet. It's just filled with stuff smeared all over, really nasty, gross. And you, you look in there, and you come out, and some other lady starts to go in there. Well, you don't let her go in there. You say, it's really bad in there. Don't go in there. Because you realize that that information is valuable to her, you know. But yet, the gospel is so much more valuable. But yet, we tell somebody, don't go in that stall, or don't go down that hall, there's a bunch of uh, stuff going on down there. Or don't go see that movie, it's really not worth your money. We assign value to those things, but we don't see value to the gospel. And so, think of it that way. You have something that is really valuable to share with other people. And this is how you would do it. You go up to a stranger, up to anybody, and you'd say, you, you know, hi, you live around here? Blah, 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 blah. You go to church around here? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, if you died tonight, do you know where you would go? Heaven, hell, whatever. Um, they say, oh, I go right to hell. Or they say, oh, I go to heaven. And I, whatever they say, I say, why do you believe that? And I let them explain me if they say anything besides, I've asked Jesus to be my Lord, my Savior, I'm saved. Then I say, well, you know, I'm glad to hear you're a good person. If they say I'm a good person, it's awesome that you're a good person. Romans 3 says that all of us have sin. And Romans 6 says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is life through Jesus. And Romans 10 says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Here, I want you to be saved. Say this prayer with me real quick. Father God. I, ask, I call in the name of Jesus. I want to be saved. Forgive me for my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. They're saved. The door is open. The Holy Spirit will minister life to them, will show them that they are now righteous. They don't have to earn it. They're in Him. They're not going to lose their salvation. He loves them. He's adopted them. And now God sees them through the blood of Jesus. And they'll fall so in love with Jesus and His goodness that that they'll change because the goodness of God leads to repentance. So, um, my name is Robin Bremer, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.